sat down at the computer and was just like looking at the schedule and slowly started crossing off all the tours that were canceling and canceling and canceling and going for, you know, from hundreds of thousands a month in revenue and a shop full of employees to fix the buses to... We're sitting, standing here uh, in, in the middle of just a whole bunch of tour buses that should be out on the road. Everyone out there knows the whole tour bus industry is shut down. You want to give us kind of a timeline? Um, what happened, you know, from your perspective? Uh, I forget the exact date, but it was early March to where all of a sudden this started kind of coming down and, you know, one tour was talking about canceling and basically all the buses in the fleet and a few customer buses that I run in the fleet were either out or on their way going out or leaving a few days after the pandemic hit and within three days essentially every single tour was canceled you know every time i'd wake up i'd check my email another tour canceled 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 like buses were heading to california with drivers on them and you know the drivers were talking to the tour managers saying we're going to try to do the tour no matter what and and we're going to make it through this and i said hold on a second i'm talking to somebody in management they're saying that it's not going to happen and then the band guys think it's going to happen and it was all over the place everyone was kind of freaking out there was guys that were flying in from europe on a couple tours that already landed made it here before the tra travel restrictions hit uh for uh, out of the country or for international travel and as soon as that happened i was like no nah, we're done and then that's when i kind of started gearing up to figure out what was going on uh, during that time, I had everyone in the shop. It, I think it was Thursday, actually, is when this all happened. And I just sat down at the computer and was just like looking at the schedule and slowly started crossing off all the tours that were canceling and canceling and canceling. And next thing you knew, we're going for, you know, from hundreds of thousands a month in revenue and a shop full of employees to fix the buses to all the drivers that were gearing up for the year because our season you know technically doesn't really start until february march during christmas and holidays is when everyone kind of goes home so a lot of the guys didn't even make it out to start touring this year the rug just got pulled from underneath them over the last few weeks the federal government has been bailing out some of the other industries and there's actually uh, 800 buses that are heading to Washington DC shed some light on the, on the forgotten industry the, the airline industry got a bailout the uh, train industry's got a bailout the hotel industry's got a bailout the the bus industry was totally forgotten the problem is is a lot of people think you know the entertainer bus industry is is just for entertainment but it's also we you know like i've been hauling a lot of medical patients in in the buses that can't fly and stuff like that private families that that you know they may have a, a rare form of cancer that need to go to the mayo clinic in scottsdale we'll pick them up and bring them there and do stuff like that so it's not just entertainment that we're hauling but there's sports teams there's you know and then that's just the the, the entertainer buses that we have but there's also the seated charter companies out there that you know pe bring people to and from disneyland and and to the courthouses you know there'll be parking rides there's there's a huge amount of people that are out of work right now that are furloughed and or will probably be let go in the near future um because this pandemic is just wiped out all travel for everybody tough tough times here and on uh, may 13th there's going to be 800 buses that are going to washington dc to try to get the you know, attention the um, awareness going yeah yeah these buses are a valuable asset to our infrastructure um, a lot of buses are used for emergency situations through fema if um, people need to evacuate from fires hurricanes tornadoes uh, any kind of natural disaster. I really have a ton of respect for how Kyle has handled this whole situation. I've been in touch with him over the last few weeks. What have you done to try to stay resilient, keep your guys working as much as possible or as many of you guys working as possible? What have you done? These times we've had to transform our business into a lot of maintenance and repairs on other people's coaches, which has been great. We've been doing a lot of motor homework. Obviously, I have the inverter side of business, which has been really booming these days because I feel that a lot of people are 
now not wanting to stay in hotels and and travel you know via plane so they're actually starting to buy motorhomes like you've seen sales of a couple friends of mine have um motorhome lots and they've been selling motorhomes left and right you know i've been getting calls on people wanting to you know buy prevos and if i know of any prevos that are good deals out there because they're wanting to get into a coach now and and i i really i think when this is all said and done that the motor coach industry is actually going to grow but we just have to get past the pandemic so the entertainer side and the leasing side and the seated charters can actually get back out there and start hauling people around but I think it's going to be a while until people are comfortable enough to um, travel in, in a bus, like especially the seated charters are 55 passengers, right? Uh, to cram 55 people inside a bus is going to be probably at least a year or two from now. And through all this, can I ask you, I know this is like, this is a lot of information, so if you don't want to share, I totally understand, but can I ask you what your insurance cost was? on your whole fleet of buses. You shared with me that you had to cancel all the insurance because these buses have been sitting. Would you be uh, willing to talk about that? Tens of thousands in, in the size fleet that we have. You know, obviously I don't want to talk about specifics, but it, it's, it's a lot of money. And without any vehicles moving, basically we had to go to the insurance companies and say, hey, look, we physically don't have any way to actually make money to pay the insurance unless if we just start draining our maintenance accounts and that puts us to where we can't put any maintenance in the coaches and obviously it, it, it's a tumbling effect to where if you don't put the maintenance in the coach when they're ready to roll the, they're not safe to be on the road therefore your insurance liability goes up it's it's just you, you can't start messing around uh, on the maintenance side of things so we've we've gone to the insurance companies and they actually have been very very nice to work with and basically kept fire and theft on the vehicles and liability it has been removed um, on the majority of the fleet there are a few just in case we get those calls to where where people need to transport you know um, obviously non-band related or entertainment related but if they need to be transported for medical reasons or for any other reasons we can we can do that but um, we now we're saving all that money that we can actually put into the coaches to use this downtime to get them all prepped and ready to go. But fortunately enough, we have our own shop here and we can do that and keep our guys busy. But a lot of guys in the business that are, you know, smaller companies or don't have cash flow from anything else and they're just in entertainment leasing, I'm hearing have the doors closed right now. They furloughed everyone, even their shop people, and th there's no future in, in sight anytime soon. One of the things that was brought to my attention is, is with the bus industry, a lot of these guys that own these bus companies are small businesses like Kyle, uh, all of the, uh, all of the owners of tour bus companies, transport bus companies that I have met personally are just real good down to earth folks. And a lot of great people that really team together in the bus, bus industry overall. Um, but, but one of my observations in all this is, the huge industries, the airline industries are getting bailed out with huge bailouts, the hotel industries. Um, and these are all industries that are much larger. If an airline goes out of business, it's gonna be much harder for someone to pick up the pieces and restart an airline, where if a bus company goes out of business, it's a smaller business. And my personal opinion is just because it's a smaller business, it shouldn't be any less valuable and it's just really too bad that the airline industries are getting huge bailouts and all of these guys in these buses are getting totally left behind. And there's 800 buses going to Washington, D.C. on May 13th to send that message to the White House. And um, if the federal government's going to help everybody else, I think these guys deserve it just as much as anybody else. Man. No, I agree. And if we were closer to Washington, we'd be sending some buses. It's just... For, for the distance away, you know, obviously we're on the West Coast, Arizona, so it, it doesn't make uh, sense for us to run coaches from here to there, but our some of our affiliates and friends definitely will be there representing us. Kyle, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to just share with everyone everything going on in the bus industry and, and uh, some of your inside wisdom on everything going on. And I greatly appreciate all of you uh, watching today's video. Hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.